Hey guys, good afternoon. It's MJ. I just truly hope you all are having an amazing day today. I'm a little tired. Tootsie looks like she is too. She's sitting there behind me, looking out the window, watching and waiting. We got some crazy, crazy things going on right now in our world, guys. I'm going to share out of my poetic justice. And yes, I did write these books that I share out of. Somebody did ask me who writes these books that I share out of. And I apologize that I haven't shared that in a long time. Don't want y'all to think I'm just on here promoting these books. Um, but yes, I have written three books. Uh, Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock, Behold Thine Enemy, and My Poetic Justice. And I'm actually working on my fourth book. But I get on here actually to encourage, the Bible tells us to encourage one another as we see the day approaching. We are looking for a blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And guys, actually, I truly believe that I get on here and share because I get more encouraged than any of you. I truly, truly believe that. Um, and I'm so grateful that I was obedient to the Lord when he called me. Gosh, it's been going on three years. I have to look at the actual date. It's been almost three years. But um, this is called the perfect storm. And if we are not in the perfect storm, I don't know what it's called, but this is the perfect storm. But don't focus on the storm. No matter how high the waves, circumstances may be uncomfortable. But remember, you are eternally safe. Command all emotions to be silenced. Don't let fear into the boat. The captain of this vessel has promised to keep his vessel afloat. If we allow our flesh to doubt, indeed we will soon sink, allowing ourselves to grow bitter instead of trusting the King of Kings. Arise, my soul, the captain is faithful, and this storm will soon be done. We will behold the beauty of our God through the eyes of the risen sun. James 1, 8, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the waves. That we don't want to be. You know, I used to pray in such a way where I'd bring God all my problems, you know, and I know a lot of us prayed this way before, you know, we would bring him all our problems, which he knows anyway, you know, uh, bring him all our problems, just like bring the wheelbarrow full, dump them at his feet and in Jesus name, amen, you know, and not give him time to speak to us. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and know my voice. They listen to the voice of no other. So we need to give God an opportunity to speak. He has a voice and we are his sheep. So I've learned to be still as hard as that has been in my life with my ADD and crazy stuff going on. Um, be still and know that he's God. He's got this. He's got everything. He knows everything. Everything that was going to happen today was going to happen. He knows everything that's going to happen tomorrow is going to happen. He knows everything that's going to happen at the end. He stands at the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he knows the end from the beginning. So sometimes we have to simply be still and and allow his presence to infiltrate our troubled soul. You know, sometimes we allow fear and, and doubt and anxiety. There are 365 verses in the Bible that tell us, fear not, be anxious for nothing in one form or another that tell us not to fear, not to worry, not to doubt. That gives us a good indication that God does not want us to be worried about things. So let's not worry about what's going on or be troubled in our soul about what's going on. Okay, so I just felt that strongly that we don't need to be anxious, guys, about what's going on in our world right now. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a, got a lot going on in the political world. There's a lot going on in wars and rumors of war. 
um, we're at the end of this dispensation called the church age. There is no question in my mind. We are at the very end. And I know that we've been saying this and um, sharing this for a couple years now. And the Lord has put it strongly on a lot of our hearts as um, watchmen and watchwomen. And there are watchwomen. Some people said there's not. Somebody sent me a comment. There's not watchwomen. Yes, there are. We are all called to watch and wait for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are all called to encourage one another as we see that day approaching. What day? The rapture. Guys, that trumpet is going to sound. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we, this final generation, I believe, with all of my heart, no one can tell me differently. This final generation will be caught up together with them in those clouds and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. Encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And you know, there is a special crown awaiting those of us who are watching and waiting. Do we do that for the crown? Uh, no, we're not watching and waiting specifically for the crown. Because that very crown we throw down at Jesus' feet. We are watching and waiting, longing to see our Jesus face to face, to see our Savior, to see the one who bore our sin, our shame, our guilt. And we can't wait to spend eternity with him. That's what that scripture means. Waiting, watching and waiting for our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So... Don't be anxious. Don't be fearful. Whatever it is, whatever the storm is, know that Jesus is still on the boat. It doesn't matter how high the waves get. Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. We need to know that because our troubled soul will sometimes go wayward, won't it? And then we go prodigal. And it's like, why do that? because he's always with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Then we get ourselves in trouble. I was a prodigal for 11 years, so I know. So this channel is to locate and educate those prodigals at risk. And of course, bring Jesus to people and, and people to Jesus while there's yet time. And there's not much time, guys. We should all be sharing the gospel, planting those seeds because God will use those seeds that we plant right now during the tribulation. Every saint that is mentioned after Revelation chapter 4, that's a tribulation saint. And they will have to be beheaded for their faith. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This channel is not about religion. This channel is 100% pre-trib. This is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, Pre-trib simply means, pre-tribulation simply means that we, the church, will be gone before the seven-year tribulation. Um, the seven-year tribulation is not for the church. The seven-year tribulation is the 70th week of Daniel, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, which is not the time of the church's trouble. Okay, Jesus took 100% of our wrath on that cross. So we are not appointed to wrath. So we are going to be leaving. The believing will be leaving soon and very soon. The Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, that he was buried, and on that third day rose again, according to Scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation, guys. God did not make it hard. People made it hard. This flesh made it hard. Religion makes it hard. Religion puts all these do's and don'ts and religion says do, the gospel says done. Jesus Christ said it is finished on that cross. Our sins past, present, and future cleansed by the power of that blood. But first you must admit, A, admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of the Savior, and there's only one. God made it as simple as the ABCs, guys, to get saved, to get born again. And there's only one kind of Christian that's truly a Christian, and that's a born-again Christian. 
So God made it as simple as ABCs. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would simply believe would not perish but have everlasting life. You simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of the Savior and there is only one. It's the one they're mocking at the opening of the Olympics. It's why aren't they mocking Buddha or Muhammad or Allah or because it's the truth and only the truth will set you free. Okay, the Bible says that mockers and scoffers will come in the last days. We have arrived in the last days. We don't know what second, what moment that trumpet's gonna sound, but we know we have arrived. We know that we are so very near, so very near. I would not take another second I would not wait. I would come to the Lord now. A is to simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of the Savior. And as we've established, there is only one, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of this world. B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins. Not only for the sins of this whole wide world, but your own personal sins. And C, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved if you join a certain church or complete a program or we become the church the moment we say I do to Jesus Christ. We become sons and daughters adopted into God's very own family. So call upon the name of the Lord today. And um, like I said, I wouldn't wait. So this is out of Behold Thine Enemy. And trust me when I tell you, there is an enemy. And this is called Framed. Well, let me just read from here. Let me just read from the beginning here. How's that? Spiritual warfare is increasing, isn't it, guys? But greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Greater is the army that is with us than the army that is against us. Here we go. All right, so foul play. This is the forward. How would you respond if someone informed you of an opportunity to turn every wrong you've ever done in your life into a treasured masterpiece? I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. If life had dealt me a wonderful beginning, perhaps I would have missed this incredible end. Ironically, though, it was there in the most painful season of my life that I would learn how to appreciate and eventually cherish the beauty of defeat. I responded to this invitation solely out of desperation, but you certainly don't have to wait until then to receive it. Humanly speaking, I should have been long gone, but despite my ignorance and willful resistance, of spiritual warfare, Jesus Christ wielded that glorious plan of redemption in his hand, denying the enemy permanent access. And in his infinite wisdom, God Almighty designed every bit of my prodigal lifestyle to one day bring untold glory back to himself. Today is that day. Scary thought that some of us unwittingly spend our entire lives believing lies, subconsciously accepting counterfeit identities without the slightest clue that we've been framed by an invisible enemy. To the untold population also suspecting foul play, perhaps this book or this channel is exactly what you've been waiting for. Evidence that not only confirms your suspicion of foul play, but provides a very concrete plan of escape. Listening to someone else's account often enables us to believe that beneath our own life's wreckage, a still small voice beckons. It's been said that the pivotal force for change is pain. It was the very key to unlock my life's bolted door. With that same key, I was given the wisdom and clarity to behold my enemy and arrest him in my tracks. I was then asked to write a formal complaint, complaint reporting the facts of my unlawful detention that you too might witness the final verdict. This is my burden of proof concrete concrete evidence that justice still prevails in the lives of all who truly seek liberty. 
My prayer is that you come to the understanding that catching and detaining your suspect relies solely upon your ability to clearly see the truth and willingly recognize the lies. For it is your responsibility and great privilege to find out exactly who and what stand, stands in harm's way. Like any burglar, your enemy isn't going to surrender until he's identified and caught. Beloved, Jesus Christ is the only one with the power and authority to detain him. This isn't called a war for nothing, and we wouldn't be called soldiers if we weren't expected to fight. Time as we know it, dear reader, is quickly running out, and together we stand at the threshold of his stories, his stories, final chapter. If you don't believe in his story, you can bet that your enemy has everything to do with that unbelief. And if you do believe, what is the fruit of that belief? Just for the record, it was never my ambition to write a story about the enemy. And you can bet that it isn't by chance that you hold this book in your hands or are listening to this YouTube video. It is by grace and grace alone that this has been accomplished. I simply yielded and said yes when Jesus Christ extended the call. From that point on, my story became his story. Psalm 29, Psalm 92, 9. For behold thine enemies, O Lord, for behold thine enemies shall perish. Framed, chapter 1. Mama always forbid tattling, unless, of course, the matter was a matter of life and death. And so it is. I need to qualify the fact that before I first took my first drink of alcohol at the age of five, I was framed for addiction. Before I told my first lie or even knew what a drug was at the age of 10, I was framed. Before I discovered my counterfeit calling of cocaine cowgirl transporting untold kilos from South Florida to New York with my former, former husband, the Colombian I married on my 18th birthday, I had been framed. His boss, Pablo Escobar, had also been framed. Maybe you're not guilty of the same type of sins I committed, but according to the Bible, we're all guilty. Romans 3.23 states, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Till that fact is well established and settled in our hearts, we don't stand a chance in life or in the afterlife, which is guaranteed to be a lot longer. Personally, I agreed with God on the issue of sin. That's the whole reason I came to Christ in the first place. But because of my gross lack of spiritual knowledge, Satan took full advantage and nominated me, without my permission, mind you, as a perfect candidate for destruction. Unbeknownst to me, I'd also been framed and sealed at salvation by a power much greater than the tormenting accuser attempting to counterfeit my identity. I suppose the true motivation behind my urgency in delivering this message is that had I known earlier what I know now about this spiritual war, perhaps I wouldn't have made such destructive choices throughout my life. If I'd been forewarned of the suggestive power behind my daily confusion and hopelessness, I may, have, I may have averted the cartel chaos I so willingly embraced as normal. I suspect that because of my familiarity with this chaos, God has called me to warn you that you too may be the enemy's prey. It doesn't matter who or what led you down your twisted road. The good news is that if you are indeed saved, having acknowledged Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you are already on the winning side of this battle simply because of who he is and what he accomplished at Calvary. For many years, Father's eyes gazed lovingly into the dark cavern of my stubborn soul. When I say stubborn, I mean it was stubborn. Longing for me to finally admit defeat. The counterfeit barriers I directed attempting to shelter me from life's frightening reality would remain firmly fixed in place until circumstances necessitated a drastic change. To be, a down, to be honest, it was downright embarrassing to admit that I had totally misjudged God's awesome character. Who would have imagined... Who could imagine the Son of God would wait patiently for those hostile circumstances to force me into a concrete realization of his love? The gift of forgiveness has so impacted my life that I wish to extend the same liberty to prisoners currently chained to the demonic infrastructure of sin, sin as I was. The enemy's strategies exist only to garnish our souls with hopelessness, to convince us that there's no way out of our particular circumstance, to assure us that God won't forgive us for the awful things we've done, and to make us question whether we were even saved to begin with. He's really good at that kind of stuff. That's why he's called a liar. He does what he does well, and I hate to give him a compliment. But there it is. Having unwittingly allowed the voice of this enemy to become an active part of my daily decisions for so many years qualifies me 
to testify with utmost accuracy to his deceptive intent and character. This is that testimony. Although my discipleship began at the age of 11, many years would pass before I arrived at the profound realization that my life had already been transformed and hidden in Christ the moment I became born again. Colossians 3.3 3. A broken heart, multiple addictions, unresolved childhood trauma, and living on the edge would finally equip my soul with a mysterious willingness to finally discover the spiritual life in Christ that had been sovereignly tucked away. Unbeknownst to me throughout my years of progressive defeat, God was inconspicuously working behind the scenes, assembling a firm foundation not only for my benefit, but paving the way that those suffering from the same spiritual blindness might also benefit. Little did I know that the savage bumps comprising my near-fatal journey would one day serve to educate a multitude of equally dazed and confused souls. Destined to be fatherless before the age of two certainly contributed to my wayward nature, but the majority of my rebellion came simply from my selfish human nature, of which all of us are born equally imprisoned. For years, I toiled along life's crowded highway, certain that I walked alone, denying my inherent birthright, oblivious to the presence of divine footprints trudging right alongside me. Eventually, I would be instructed by the Holy Spirit exactly how to reclaim my spiritual birthright, and I can assure you that's a treasure I will never compromise again. Like me, if you trust God with your most painful areas, in time you'll look back to that very place where the thief stole your most valuable possessions and discover spiritual riches beyond belief. Those newfound treasures will be so magnificent that, like me, you'll be compelled to share them with the world, proudly placing the contents in a frame for all the world to see. This is my frame. Romans 8, 28, and this is my favorite scripture. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All things, not some things, even sexual abuse, even domestic violence, even fill in your own blank. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. In Philippians 1.12, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. God has a magnificent way of turning what the enemy has meant for harm in our life into magnificent jewels right in front of our very eyes. That's just the way he is. He's our creator. He can do that. He has that magnificent ability to do so. So just trust him with your most painful areas. I hope y'all are uh, on board with journaling. Um, we are journaling and we are um, journaling on Sunday. Sundays is our journaling day. So, you know, just get your journal, just sit down and make a commitment to 15 minutes a day. Take your Bible and your journal, just sit with Jesus 15 minutes a day. You know, leave all your other emotions and the crazy, you know, thinking, just be still and know that he's God. I'm gonna make this short today, 23 minutes. Um, Please know that we're praying for you and yours and especially your prodigal. You know, the enemy, when I say that to educate, to locate and educate prodigals at risk, what are they at risk of? At risk of deception. Because if a Christian, Christian that is walking with the Lord can be at risk of deception, how much more so a prodigal who is saved? You know, people say there's partial rapture. You know, when, when that trumpet sounds, there's partial rapture, only those who are looking up, all this nonsense. Um, no, everybody's going to be raptured. That is the body of Christ. Um, all the body of Christ will be raptured. That includes the entire church, everyone who is born again, um, even prodigals who are struggling, everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ will be raptured. And this is not a, um, you know, to say it's okay to go out and sin and you know um, because sin will bring you to your knees I promise you that sin will bring us to our knees right back full circle and we'll be looking up into the arms of our loving God there's no reason for us to be out there in sin um, 
caught up in sin right now. Jesus Christ is our deliverer. He will set us free. There is nothing. There is nothing that is greater than him. Remember, he that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. Jesus Christ died for that sin. Give it to him. Just give it over to him. And he will help you in the struggle. Okay, trust me. I've gone through many struggles with many things, allowing the Lord to walk with me in it. Remember, he's the deliverer as well as our savior. He's our healer as well as our deliverer. So allow him to walk through this journey with us. And that's why um, journaling helps us in our struggle. You know, um, that's just, journaling is a something that is just, just so very personal. And the Holy Spirit shows up big time and allows us to just see for ourselves who we truly are. And the Holy Spirit does um, surprise us sometimes. And he brings up a lot of the stuff that we don't even know is under there. All of the stuff that's under there that um, some of the ugly stuff and some of the beautiful stuff that um, we've kept way, way down there that we didn't want to see or, you know, so I highly encourage you to journal, make it a daily habit. There's good habits and there's bad habits. Make journaling a good habit. It's, it's a way of life. Love you guys. Until next time, keep looking up. We know that that trumpet is about to sound. Our, our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.